righty. Now, today I am going to be sharing with you a little something that I am calling a perennial favorite. And the reason I'm calling it a perennial favorite is that this year, kind of like our unity principles, which I share as a, a series every year, but this year I felt like, you know, we just really need these reminders. And so I'm going to be sharing one of my favorites, Woohoo! the four agreements, the four agreements, a practical guide to personal freedom. Now, I think we can all use some personal freedom, right? Now, if you have been uh, at Unity of Arlington, uh, at least during the six years that, I, that I've uh, had the honor of serving here, you might already know just how much I love, love, love these teachings. But even if you're not aware of that fun fact, you're probably aware of the four agreements because it uh, was on the New York Times bestseller list for over a decade, and it has been translated into at least 46 languages around the world. So that's pretty, that's pretty spectacular. So the four agreements is, as you can tell, I mean, it's a short book, right? It's a short book, but it is a profound book. And what I mean by that is that some people say, sure, it's a quick read, but then you spend the rest of your life practicing it. Can I get an amen to that? Mm -hmm. And this is because the writer, Don Miguel, uh, was born into a, a family in rural Mexico. And his book is all about the teachings of uh, the wisdom teachings from his people, his tribe, known as the Toltecs. Now, in the Toltec tradition, they are taught that every single human being is an artist, an artist of the spirit. And I, oh my gosh, I just love that. What if that's how we all introduced ourselves, right? Hi, I'm Anne, artist of the spirit. Isn't that just so wonderful? Because it really instantly helps remind us the truth of who we are, the truth of who we are, that we are an expression of the divine. And so anyway, Don Miguel also says that the greatest gift that comes from God is life. And the only way for us to say thank you, God, is for us to truly enjoy this life. So this found, sounds kind of familiar, right? You know, because a lot of folks, quite honestly, when they are describing uh, our unity, spiritual principles, they say something very simple, like, sure, they're simple enough, but then you spend the rest of your life practicing them. Practice, 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 right? And so these agreements are very unity, and they are also very much in keeping with our basic principles. So we're going to take a fresh look at all four today in one fell swoop. So get ready, buckle up, because this is definitely a meat and potatoes kind of talk. Here we go. The four agreements are, number one, be impeccable with your word. Number two, don't take anything personally. Number three, don't make assumptions. And number four, always do your best. So we're going to start with the first agreement. Be impeccable with your word. Now, Don Miguel says that this is an agreement that you make with yourself. It's an agreement that you make with yourself to speak with integrity, to say only what you mean, and to avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. In other words, he says, use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Now, I think it's important to mention here that Don Miguel teaches that this first agreement be impeccable with your word, is not only the most important 
agreement, but it's also the one that is the most difficult to honor. And, and I agree. And here's why. We seem to be living right now in a culture where some people, not everyone, of course, but some people feel like they can just say whatever they want, however they want. They can just make stuff up and not be accountable for it in any way. Now, this is especially true, of course, on social media platforms where you know, it looks like some, not all, but some are just, are just mean. Do you notice that? Just mean spirited because, you know, it's easy to, to bully, you know, on social media when someone thinks that they're being clever or entitled, right? But what they're really doing is spreading what Don Miguel calls poison in the interwebs. And so, you know, you, you've truly, actually, you don't even have to go that far to social media platforms because this rash of mean spiritness, spiritedness is happening in the workplace. It's happening in schools right now, especially over the mask issue. Um, and it's happening in churches, and so I urge you, uh, you know, as you hear me say so often, tweet unto others the way you want to be tweeted. I think we can agree to that, right? Don Miguel writes about it this way. And I think this is, it is just truth with a capital T. Here's what he says, garbage in, garbage out lies in, lies out, like attracts like when it comes to the word. And so when you really get this, when you really start to understand the truth of who you are, that you are an artist of the spirit, when you know that you know that you know that you are a child of God, that you are the very hands, the very feet, the very breath of God. You are the presence of God. It's no wonder then that there's so much truth in that old saying, gossip dies when it hits a wise person's ears. And prayerfully, that's you. So I encourage you uh, to use that wonderful Buddhist practice of right speech. Uh, you may have heard this one before um, uh, for right speech and to think before you speak. So it's the acronym THINK, T-H-I-N-K. The T is for, is it true? The H is, is it helpful? The I, is it inspiring? The N, is it necessary? Really? And then, of course, the K is for, is it kind? Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Those are the gates through which you can check in with yourself. Now, for the love of goodness and all things sacred, please speak with integrity. You know, integrity is one of our core values at Unity of Arlington. So be impeccable with your word and think before you say anything, before you tweet anything, before you post anything, and certainly before you push send. Now, I'm not just talking about the things that you you might personally originally post. What about the things that you comment on or the things that you, uh, you know, give your little emoji to, right? You're in charge of that. And so think before you speak to help you be impeccable with your word. Okay, the second agreement is don't take anything personally. 
Now, Don Miguel describes this second agreement by saying this. He says, don't take anything personally. Nothing others do is because of you. What others do and say is a projection of their own reality and their own dream. And I would add their own unresolved woundedness. You know, could be grief, uh, could be an addiction of some kind, but it really is a reflection of a person's own unresolved woundedness. Anyway, uh, Miguel goes on to say, Don Miguel goes on to say, for example, if I see you on the street and I say, hey, you're so stupid, without knowing you, if I say something like that, of course, clearly it's not about you. But you take it personally because you agree with whatever was said on some level. And as soon as you agree, the poison goes through you and you are trapped in the dream of hell. What causes you to be trapped is what we call personal importance. Nothing other people do is because of you. It is because of themselves. He says, even when a situation seems so personal, even if others insult you directly, it has nothing to do with you. What they say, what they do, and the opinions they give are according to the agreements that they have within their own minds. Now, this reminds me of a story uh, that a minister friend, a colleague shared with me a few years ago about a woman who was going through a divorce. So she was a well-to-do divorcee. And so she came in for some spiritual counseling. Now, at the time, my friend Reverend Terry said that the woman was only 40, but she actually, she actually looked more like she was 60. And it was because the joy of life, her joie de vie, right, had been sucked out of her. And of course, she went on and on about how absolutely nothing in her life was working. And so my friend asked her, what, what are you doing? You know, how are you participating? How are you showing up in your life? And the woman said, well, what can I do? I mean, Nobody seems to care and there's really nothing to do. And then with that, Terry said, well, what would you like to do today? And I'm going to encourage you to ask yourself this, like, what would you like to do today if you could do anything that you that you want? And she said, I'd go to the beach. Great. When are you going to the beach? Well, how can I? Nobody will go with me. So Terry said, well, how many people have you have you asked? And she said, two. They're all busy. And then Terry said, do you realize that there are over 7 billion people on this planet? And right now you're letting the last two that you spoke to run your life. Now, I share this with you because I don't know about you, but every time I practice this agreement every time I hear this agreement and I remind myself of this agreement, don't take anything personally. I think about how easy Don Miguel makes all of this sound. I mean, it's simple. It's a simple concept, right? But it can be difficult to, to practice. So here's what I mean by this. Because of your level of personal importance, as Don Miguel said, you choose to you choose to take something personally. And so you start to feel offended. And when you start to feel offended, then you feel like you need to defend, right, yourself with some kind of reaction, not a response, but a reaction to what you feel you choose to feel offended by. Is this making sense or are you guys with me? Let me know in the in the chat box. And so this is why Don Miguel says that um, that the things that we take personally, um, mostly we just do out of habit 
because we don't pause, because we don't think before we speak, you know, these kinds of things. And so it becomes really an unpleasant and unhealthy habit. Not taking anything personally does not mean that you won't have a response to something. It doesn't mean that you won't take an action. But when you take something personally, you often end up doing and saying the very things that you don't want to do and say because you are reacting from your emotions, right? Which in that moment are controlling you. You're not controlling them. And so the reason that it's so painful is because there's a part of you that actually agrees with this, this thing that was said or done. And it touches an unhealed wound in you. So truthfully, it's an opportunity for you to check in with yourself and say, what is this emotional charge that I'm feeling here? And what kind of work do I need to do around this? What kind of spiritual work do I need to do? Do I need to work with my minister? Do I need to work with a therapist? You know, do I need to do more forgiveness work? What do I need to do around this? Because what happens is not only do you hurt others with the poison that you're spewing, but you hurt yourself. You hurt yourself. You know, it's as if really honestly um, that whatever was said or done really is a trigger for you to be angry instead of doing your work. And so my prayer for you today is that you leave here knowing that you don't have to take anything personally. You can practice moving past any kind of emotions of fear and anger, which we all have them. Of course, they're they're reasonable, right? But you don't want to stay there. So please hear me. You you have to do you have to do your inner work. You know, stop projecting your stuff on other people because we're not responsible for the actions of others, but we are responsible for our own. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. After all, you know, it may be possible. It just might be possible that you have an area where you can grow and change. We all have that if we're willing to take a look at ourselves. And so I encourage you to me to be mindful here that no matter what, no matter what, you know, and I, I learned this uh, from many years of working in Hollywood, literally in film and television, no matter what, I promise you, you are never as bad as your worst critic and you're never as great as your biggest fan. You just, you're just not. It's really just that simple. You are somewhere in the middle. You're somewhere in the middle. And so don't take anything personally. All right, moving right along now to the third agreement. Now, the third agreement is don't make assumptions. And the main thing that I want to share with you about the third agreement, don't make assumptions, is that don't make assumptions goes hand in hand with don't take anything personally, because you cannot take something personally unless you're making assumptions. Isn't it nice how that works? Full circle. This is why it's a really good idea to remember that pithy phrase. I, I remember uh, learning this growing up. Uh, remember, uh, when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. I remember because at the time it was just fun to say <laughs> the ASS word. Okay. When you assume you make an ass out of you and me, right? That one. Now, of course, our master teacher and way shower Jesus, he was much more eloquent in the way that he talked about this. And so in the gospel of Matthew, uh, Jesus said, why do you, why, 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 why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but you don't even notice the plank the log that is sticking out of your own eye. 
So first take the log out of your own eye and then, and then you can clearly see the speck to take out, to help your neighbor take out of their eye. And so I think that Jesus is having a little fun here because this is such an exaggerated example, but it's a great one, right? Because it points to just how easy it is to focus on the wrong thing and to make an assumption. And so the first priority is to look at your own life, right? Look at your own practice. Look at the obstacles that are in your own way from your own spiritual insight. You know, this is why you hear me say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Mm -hmm. You see, your mind can act like a wild horse or a runaway train, and it will go wherever it wants if you don't mind your mind, right? You got to mind your mind. Are you with me? Now, Don Miguel explains it this way. He writes, the problem with making assumptions is that we believe that they're true. We could swear that they're real. We make assumptions about what others are doing or thinking, and we take it personally. Then we blame them and react by sending emotional poison out into the world. This is why whenever we make assumptions, we're actually asking for problems. And so what is the major risk of making assumptions? I'm so glad you asked. The major risk is that we could be wrong. In fact, if you are making an assumption, there's a really good possibility that you are not correct. <laughs> And so the point is this, instead of making assumptions, you have to find the courage to, to ask questions. And you have to ask questions to find out if your assumption is even true. And I say find the courage to ask questions because quite honestly, because of this issue about habit that Don Miguel talks about, so many of us would just assume, make stuff up, right? To make an assumption, then actually ask questions to find out if it's true. Particularly, please hear me, those questions need to be asked directly to the right person or right people, right? But many of us don't do that because we don't, we don't really want to hear the truth, right? It's just oh, so much easier to just make stuff up. And so the stream of consciousness goes something like this. You don't ask a question for clarification. So you fill in the blanks with the assumed answer. And then you act as if the answer you filled in the blank with is actually true, only to discover later that you were way off base. And if you're not speaking directly to the right person or right people, then you are very likely a part of the problem. So let me just say that again. If you're not speaking directly to the right person or the right people, then you very likely are part of the poisonous problem. And so if that is the case, then here is your instruction. Do not pass go. <laughs> go back to square one. Go back to the first agreement to be impeccable with your word. Make sense? Are you with me? I know this is such good stuff. Now, listen, we have all done this. We all do this on some level. So I want you to be easy with yourself. This isn't about judging yourself or judging others, right? This is about awareness, just like we learned in the daily word today. Because when you are aware that that's your, you know, uh, habitual thinking, then you can rein yourself in, right? And remember, don't take anything personally. Remember to not make assumptions, right? You know, especially 
especially, you know, with some of our, our relationships, right? You know, we assume that our partner or our friend or our family member, or maybe it's a coworker or your minister, right? We assume that he or she knows exactly what we want. Like there's some kind of Vulcan mind melt going on. And then we get upset when they don't give it to us. Now, this is why it's been said what the world really needs is a big net for those who jump to conclusions. And so if we could only, and we can, because we're in charge, right? Ask questions to clarify. Ask questions to clarify directly with the right person or right people instead of making assumptions. If we could just do this one thing, it would transform our entire world. Mm, mm, mm. And so that leads us now to our fourth and final agreement. Always do your best. Always do your best. And so in his book, Don Miguel says that under any circumstance, always do your best. And the teaching here is this, and, and please do take this in because this can change your life right now, today. Know that your best is going to change from, from moment to moment. Here's what he writes. Don Miguel writes, when you wake up refreshed and energized in the morning, your best will be better than when you're tired. Now, that's just common sense, isn't it? But let's remind ourselves of that. You know, if you wake up energized, your best is going to be better than if you are depleted and fatigued. Okay, I know I got sidetracked. He goes on to write, your best will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick or sober as opposed to intoxicated. Your best will depend on whether you're feeling wonderful and happy or upset, angry or jealous. So there's a distinction to be made here between being the best, that's not what we're talking about, and doing your best. And this makes perfect sense, right? You know, this is why we want to strive for progress, not perfection. We want to strive for progress, not perfection. Would someone please put that in the, the chat box? Strive for progress, not perfection. Because over time, your ability to do your best is, is going to change. And that's okay. And that is okay. So we're not talking about being the best. We're talking about you doing your best in each moment. We're talking about striving for progress, not perfection. Because when you practice doing your best in whatever situation you're in, whatever your, your circumstances that, that you're being challenged with right now, when you practice doing your best, one of two things is going to happen. One of two things is going to happen. Either the circumstance will change and it will improve right where you are, or something better will come along. And the doors will open and your path will be made clear with ease and grace, with ease and grace. And so Don Miguel, here's how he puts all of this together. This is so wonderful. He says, the first three agreements will only work if you do your best, if you always do your best. Don't expect, and here's why, don't expect that you will always be able to be impeccable with your word. Your routine habits are too strong and firmly rooted in your mind, but you can do your best. Don't expect that you will never take anything personally, but you can do your best. Don't expect that you will never make another assumption, but you certainly can do your best. <laughs> I 
And so we have covered a lot today in our little refresher with Don Miguel's agreements. If you do not have this little gem, I really encourage you. I mean, you can get it on Kindle if you want, but um, if that suits you. But however, just get it and have it on your on your bookshelf. This is a fantastic spiritual tool that you want in your in your toolkit. OK, so we've gone over a lot in this little refresher today, and I want to leave you with a wonderful uh, piece that is called the Paradoxical Commandments. Now, this was actually found posted on a wall in Mother Teresa's children's home in Calcutta. And I think that it speaks so beautifully to how we practice these powerful four agreements. So this, my dear ones, is your heart work for the rest of your life. Take this in. People are unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Love them anyway. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Do good anyway. If you are successful, you win false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. The good you do will be forgotten tomorrow, but do good anyway. Honesty and frankness make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank. Anyway, what you spend years building may be destroyed overnight in the blink of an eye. Build anyway. People really need help, but they may attack you if you help them. Help people anyway. Give the world the best that you have, and you, you might you might take some hits. You might get kicked in the teeth. Give the world the best you have anyway. The truth of who you are is that you are an expression of God. You are the very hands and feet and breath of God. So be mindful of how you show up in this world. The world needs you. The world needs you. And so ends our message for today. Thank you and God bless you.